Back in class during COVID-19, KY3 On Your Side is inside your school, preparing your family with the facts, not fears. If your kid typically rides the bus, listen up. The rules are changing. We're breaking down every risk and precaution you need to know. It will dispense those into the air to disinfect those. This Monday night at 6.30, we are asking your questions to Springfield Schools Superintendent Dr. Jungman during a special Facebook town hall. KY3 is on your side for back to school. Well, hey there, thanks for joining us for this special uh, KY3 Facebook Live. We're doing, as you know, a series of these, these discussions with some of the largest school districts in our area. Well, Kylie asks, what about the kids who don't have Wi-Fi and can't always make it to somewhere that does? And I guess because she's considering the virtual learning option. Sure, so uh, Lisa, in our, in our area, our demographic, we've got, we've got a couple different issues. We have areas that we pick up students at that you don't even have good cell phone coverage. So when we talk about buying hot sticks, Wi-Fi sticks. So Susan wants to know, what are the plans to physically distance in the hallways in high school during that time? Oh, well, I, I would like to have great news for you on that because, uh, you know, I just saw on Twitter and a couple of things, some of the school districts that were coming back and, uh, you know, students taking pictures in the hallway and right. some kids mask. Some kids kissing. Yeah, correct. So <laughs> we, we, still have, we still have the PDA rules in school. Oh, okay. Those didn't go away, but. Um, Taylor asks, and I want to uh, just preface this by saying it's a little bit difficult to even ask this, but what if a teacher dies? What are the plans to help support students during this time? And, and obviously we know that that's rare that a younger person without any comorbidities would succumb to this, but what would you say to Taylor? So Taylor, I would say that you're, you, you have a great question. It's a concern for me and our administrative team. I, I, I don't know what to say if we lost a teacher or a student. It's a fact. We want to be here safely. Right. I don't want any of my friends to pass away from COVID. Oh, well, yeah. So what happens? We've got to have the, the, the procedures in place, our counselors, our administrators, our teachers. But we're going we're gonna to basically go to our students and say, okay, we know that your parents want school. You've told us you want school. This is going to be about personal responsibility. Help us help you. To have school. What uh, is the plan for sports? Well, our plan will align to Misha. Our plan did not align to Misha previously, and I'm, I'm just going to announce that. And yeah. all of my colleagues are like, "Oh my gosh, you should have said that." But if a family chose the online option, now while right. I think it's interesting that you would choose online for safety and then go, "Well, I want them to be involved in sports right. and, and, and interactions, whether it be football, softball," okay, those don't really align. But locally, I believe that that's a family's choice. Mm -hmm. And we were going to support however we could, allowing those students to participate in, in extracurricular events, whether that be band, marching band, uh, speech debate, or athletics. Now, this is a different experience. KY3 is on your side, preparing you for back to school. We will not do the incentives this year to, to come to school. Teachers will be trained in virtual supports. Getting new information from school leaders on what to expect. We will be seating students with their family groups. We're in the process of adding at least three additional positions. Friday at 5.30, we're asking your questions to the Harrison School District on Facebook Live. KY3 is on your side for back to school. This is uh, the kids asking this question. Will grades count this year? <laughs> so the answer is yes. <laughs> that is going to be one of the most substantial differences between the spring and now is that we will have processes for collecting and grading and giving feedback on student work. I um, understand the anxiety and the fear and, and the concern because we share that. As, as parents ourselves, my children are grown, but Mike and Garrett both have children in our school system. We want to make sure we do everything possible to keep every child and every staff member as safe as we can. I want to get this on the record and, and set the record straight. How do I say Berryville? Because we have some folks who work in the KY3 newsroom. They are from Arkansas, and they insist, and I think that they're probably right, that it's Burville. It's Burville as opposed to Berryville, how, how some other people might say it. So you take me through it. How do you, how do you pronounce it? Well, it's probably up for discussion, but, but I would pronounce it Berryville. Berryville. 
variable. So it's kind of a, a hybrid there. I imagine there are some parents in this category where they would they would prefer to choose virtual learning from home, but they don't have the proper Wi-Fi connection, internet connection to make that function in real time as needed. What, what do you say to those parents? Is there an answer for them? Yeah, I mean, that, that is a real problem, and, and it's a real challenge for us in Berryville. Berryville is very rural. Um, we did some surveys back in the spring when all this kind of came about, and uh, what we found is we have about 25% of our, our families, our students, that really don't have good internet connection or even cell phone connection as far as that goes. So we have set up some hotspots throughout the school district in the more rural areas. Uh, I believe right now we have three. We've, we've partnered with some local churches uh, that have allowed us to use basically their parking lots. KY3 is the place to be for back to school. Is that up to the parents to just choose online if they don't feel comfortable? Answered your questions on Facebook Live. They don't want to bring their child to school, then, then yes, absolutely. Showed you the safety measures. You walk us through the cleaning process of the schools. We're looking for some additional staff that will go through and sanitize the district. In the classroom and on the bus. Families are seated together and I will have an assigned seat. All of us are learning as we move forward. KY3 is the place to be for back to school. This is a special KY3 town hall inside your school. Uh, I know so many people, not just in Lebanon, but across the state and the country have, have really missed having kids in school. Between each route, we'll sanitize the bus and, and, and thoroughly clean it so that it's ready for the next uh, group of students. Thank you, Brad. Laura, how will you handle teacher absences? I know I've been wondering about this too. If a teacher gets sick, how do you set up with getting a substitute and testing and quarantining children in that specific class? Right. Well, we partner with PenMac and contract out for our substitutes. And we're already preparing for you know, a possible shortage for our substitutes in the classroom. And what, we, what we do know is that our community needs school. Um, and, and communities like Lebanon and, and so many around Southwest Missouri, the community is, the school's the, the, the heartbeat. And we, we need to be back in school. And I don't want to say it's been stressful, but my hair was completely brown when we were in back in <laughs> Earlier you said things will be as normal as they can be. You're, you're trying to move forward normally. Does that include band and choir? I suppose it does. And, and how exactly will, will the differences play out there? Right. Band and choir, from what we understand, that's, that's really a, um, a tough spot there because the projectile of someone singing, obviously the projectile of somebody playing an instrument, of those, those kids who don't have quality internet, it's up to us to meet that need, and uh, we feel like we've taken a big step in that direction. Mr. Johnson, did you want to jump in there? Yeah, I just wanted to add something to the funding side of it. Uh, one of the great things about our community is the support we receive from local businesses, churches, organizations, and we have received m multiple offers to help out with everything from masks to school supplies. Uh, we uh, All of our uh, younger grades are receiving all of their school supplies for free this year from a local donation. The extended summer break is winding down now, sadly, and there are still lots of questions about where, how back to school is standing in many schools, and we are working to get you some answers. Tonight, our Inside Your School Facebook Town Hall series continues. We're asking your questions live on our KY3 Facebook page to some of the largest school districts in the Ozarks. Tonight, we talk to schools in Arkansas at 5.30, Berryville schools and then at 630 school leaders from the Mountain View district. You'll be able to post your questions under our post on the KY3 Facebook page and we will pose those questions to these administrators. We're just minutes away now. This is a sneak peek of, of uh, them. Hey there, getting ready to, to have that discussion. I'll be in joining you in that room uh, very soon, folks. Again, that's Berryville School starting at 530 tonight on the KY3 Facebook page. I'll see you there. Have you had time to collate those numbers and and do you have an idea? Can you tell us what parents want to do? 
Yeah, I just got some updates this afternoon. We're still doing follow-ups with some parents that haven't had the chance to respond, but uh, mm -hmm. over 23,000 of our about 24,500 uh, parents have shared with us their desire. We have been working diligently to ensure that kids have access to the classes um, that they would regularly, but, but we simply are limited by some of the courses that we can allow or offer just because of the quality that we're pushing out virtually. The good news is in SPS, we've been doing virtual education for quite some time, uh, going back to SPS online, uh, and then we turned that into the launch program where we not only serve SPS kids, but we serve uh, students from 290 districts across the state. All right, and we had another question too, just wondering about the online courses. How do they sign up for those? Okay, a uh, survey or a registration type form went out uh, yesterday. Um, and they can go online, they can look on our website, and there is a link, and they have until Friday the 7th, I believe that's Friday, to sign up. Well, let's um, just start with a question. What are we going to do if this goes all, all the way into fall? And at the time, everybody's like, well, that's not going to happen. There's no way that's going to go into the fall. Well, here we are. And uh, thank goodness that, that our leadership team and our administrators, we started thinking proactively what would we need to do if we need to uh, limit the number of people into our school? Or what would we do if we need to provide more education virtually? Um, and so we came up with a plan uh, and that plan had five, five different stages, five different settings in it. Our first and primary stage that we wanted to make sure is we wanted to go to school five days a week. Do you need cleaning supplies or extra masks that they can mm -hmm. contribute? I will be honest with you, we have some great relationships with our vendors uh, when it comes to cleaning supplies, um, hand sanitation, uh, room sanitizers, equipment. We are, we are set and ready to go. Uh, if we were to open, uh, we would be at what we would call the yellow phase, which there are four phases. Uh, mm -hmm. The lowest one is green, and then we have yellow, then orange, and then red. Stephanie wants to know, what about vaccines? Since WIC and certain services have been closed, several of us are behind on the required vaccines for children for school. Well, the real question comes in, what? because we have restrictions we have to follow as a public school district as well in requiring those vaccines. The real question is the Department of Health and Senior Services, are they lifting those requirements for schools and vaccines as the school year starts? And I don't know the answer to that. What, what's that going to be like uh, getting on the bus for, for these kids? Well, you know, Mr. Moreland brought up uh, masks, but uh, we're going to we're going to ask all our riders to wear masks. Um, we will have uh, some extras on each bus in case a student happens to forget theirs at the house. Um, and then we'll collect those at the end of the ride and wash those. And, and there, we have them each uh, individually zip locked. Uh, what about uh, uh, testing uh, for kids who 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 think they may have symptoms. They show up in the morning and then by lunchtime, they, they think they, they have a fever or they, they, they're having some symptoms. What do you do in those instances? So we have created some isolation rooms within our nursing offices. So we would obviously isolate that student and we would call the parent. A Sherry on Facebook is, is asking, if a student comes down with coronavirus, will you waive the attendance policy? And, and I would expand that to even the people around that student who may have to quarantine. So absolutely, um, you know, and we're the, we're not we're not even talking about attendance policy at this point. Um, and actually, that's being removed from our handbooks for this year, just for the fact that um, it doesn't make sense. School districts in Missouri, Southwest Missouri, there's a lot of great school districts. Specifically for us, uh -huh. Cassville is a great school district. We've got a strong community with strong beliefs. Don't lose faith in the end of the story. We can do this. We can do this.